This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I will present four common utility functions. Now, these aren't meant to represent every possible utility function, but they do represent four utility functions commonly used in economics. Now let me introduce certain classes of utility functions that are common and that we will use frequently in this class. The first is the case of a perfect substitutes utility function. These utility functions are used to represent preferences for two goods that a consumer views as perfect substitutes for another. For perfect substitutes, a consumer is always willing to substitute one good for another at the same rate. All perfect substitute utility functions will take the form u equals some positive constant a times good x plus some positive constant b times good y. Notice that both goods are raised to the power 1, not any other power. What that means is that for every perfect substitute utility function, the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to each good is constant. We call the partial derivative of u with respect to x the marginal utility of good x. The marginal utility of x tells us how consuming an additional unit of x will impact utility. Here, mux is a constant a, so for every additional x this consumer consumes, his utility goes up by the same amount a. Again, for all perfect substitute utility functions, each partial derivative or each marginal utility is a constant. An example of two goods that are regarded as perfect substitutes are Coke and Pepsi for my husband. That's because in his 20s he had a head injury and lost his sense of smell and taste. So for him, Coke and Pepsi are indistinguishable and he's therefore always willing to trade one Coke for one Pepsi. As another example, let's consider toilet paper. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, this is a very timely example because due to the coronavirus, there's a shortage of toilet paper. So right now, I'm always willing to trade or substitute three squares of toilet paper for every one tissue. Note that for perfect substitutes, the rate at which a consumer's willing to trade needs to be constant, but not necessarily equal to one. Another common class of utility functions that you will see a lot in this class is perfect complement utility functions. These are used to represent preferences for two goods that must be consumed together in a fixed proportion. A consumer is completely unwilling to substitute one good for another because more of one good without more of another in some fixed proportion does not change utility. For example, when I first started drinking coffee, I only drank a cup of coffee if it had a tablespoon of cream. You could give me another cup of coffee, but if it didn't have a tablespoon of cream, it weren't making me any better or worse off. You could give me the tablespoon of cream, but if it didn't also come with a cup of coffee, again, I wasn't any better or worse off. Another example would be left shoes and right shoes. You can give me two left shoes and three right shoes and I'd be no better off than if I had two left and two right because for every left shoe I need one right shoe to go with it. Now let's consider the utility function u equals the min of 2x comma y. Let's understand how this min function works by plugging in bundles of x and y. For example, say the consumer has one unit of x and two units of y. This bundle gives the consumer the minimum of two and two utils, where the minimum of two and two is just two. So this bundle gives two utils of happiness. Now consider keeping x at one, but increasing y from two to three. The utility of this new bundle is the min 
of 2 and 3, or the lower of the values 2 and 3, where the lower of the values 2 and 3 is still a 2. What this demonstrates is that we can keep x the same and increase y, but doing so won't change utility. Likewise, if we give the consumer two units of x instead of one, but keep y at two, let's look at utility. Utility is the min of four, that's the two times two, and two. The min of four and two is still a two. So here, we increased x by one, but we held y constant, and what happened was nothing. The utility is the same. If we want to increase utility, we have to increase x and y in a fixed proportion. What's that look like here? Well, if we give this consumer one more unit of x, moving from 1 to 2, we would need to give her two more units of y, moving her from 2 to 4. The min of 4 and 4 is 4. So here we see that utility did go up because for the additional 1x, we also gave two additional y's. One of the most commonly used utility functions in economics is the Cobb-Douglas utility function. This function represents complete, transitive, monotonic, and convex preferences. Cobb-Douglas utility functions take the form u equals some constant c times good x raised to the power a times good y raised to the power b. All of these constants, a, b, and c, are positive. We will explore more properties of Cobb-Douglas utility functions in the classes ahead. A fourth common class of utility function that we'll use a lot in this class is the quasi-linear utility function. This function describes preferences for a consumer who purchases the same amount of a good regardless of her income. That is, for quasi-linear utility functions, one of the goods is an income-neutral good whose demand does not depend on income. I'll explain later how the distinguishing feature of this utility function is that the MRS only depends on one good. For now, what I want you to see is that for quasi-linear utility functions, one and only one of the goods has a constant marginal utility. For example, if the utility function is some function of x plus a times y, for example, we might have something like u equals x to the one-half plus 2y, then muy is a constant 2, whereas mux depends on x. Here, muy is constant, while mux is not. On the other hand, if we have a utility function where it's ax plus some function of y, for example, u equals 2x, plus the log of y. Now it's mux, that's a constant, and muy, that varies with y. All quasi-linear utility functions have one good with a constant marginal utility and the other good with a non-constant marginal utility. In other words, one of the goods enters the function linearly, whereas the other doesn't. The function is half linear and half not, or quasi-linear. 